Hi, this is Linda with KC Creations. I'm doing a tutorial day for digital and SVG designs for you. This is her Globe Trotter Travel Folio. Cute little guy. I've already got one in my store. It's got a little luggage tag here. Just flips off. So cute. And I've just tied mine with some twine, if you would like. You can also, if you wanted, put a Velcro dot inside there, but I made it where it tucks underneath the little flower that I put on dimensionals. It just opens up. Got a little torn ticket there from the Grand Hotel. Let's get these little guys in it. We're going to make all of this. Opens up. We've got the little camera here. We've got some other tags going on, and we'll go through all of that. Up here, a little suitcase, some more tags. We've got a folio here, big pocket with more tags and an envelope, and a triple pocket there. Here's the back. And the papers that you get, you get ample supplies on your ephemera. This is what they look at. This is our base. These are our attachments left and right. This is the main base. Some more pockets with cards. More pockets and ephemera, some fussy cuts, pockets, more ephemera. Another large pocket, some tickets, some little tabs, fussy cuts, and an envelope, more ephemera. Got some guest list with some little words. There's our cute little luggage tag and a ton of ephemera from all over the world. our waterfall pieces. There's eight. Here's the other four. Some more ephemera. And our backing papers. Now what I do is I back all my cards and tags and I also back these pages. If you don't want to do that and just want to use one thickness of cardstock, just take one of your backing papers, whichever one you choose, and copy on the back. So let's get started, ladies. If you want to grab your kit over at Digital SVG Designs for You and craft along with me, that's great. So first of all, we're going to get everything cut out, get organized here. Make some space. Just trim it up here. And if you don't have a trimmer, that's okay. You can use a ruler and a craft knife. Straight. when I trim it, I'm not going to cut around the circle. If you've backed your paper, you can do it now, but I'm going to go ahead and back this before I trim it out so I can cut both pieces at one time. These are the little tabs that go on the side of our journal. Excuse me, I still have my awful cough. I'm not contagious. I just sound horrible. Need to trim off the sides here. Then we're going to score them. 
And if you don't have a scoreboard, you can also use a ruler, lay it down across your line and just fold it over your ruler. But I put lines on my scoreboard so that I can always line up the top and the bottom in case this edge isn't perfectly straight, my score line still will be. got it out. It's going to work right up. I didn't trim any of this. It's going to work right out at the three inch mark. I'll show you a little trick on how to get it lined up. And I'm an inker, so this is when you start inking everything. And I always ink my fold so that when this folds over, you won't see a white line where it attaches. And I do that to all of them. Not necessary, just my preference. Now on this one, let's get a piece of our background paper here. Get it right when we it's on our folio it's going to be this with the printed side so we're going to cover this side and what I do is I take my paper and I line it up with this I'll show you. let me get some glue on it and I'll show you a little bit better here you can use I have a glue string you can use whatever kind of glue you prefer. I would not recommend a glue stick on this. But any liquid glue, because you want time to scoot it around, get it lined up perfectly. Make sure you get all your edges. And when you glue, do not go right up to your fold line. I go about an eighth of an inch away, if not less. Just Close enough, but not on the fold. Now, we want this right side up, so here's our right side, like so. I'm gonna take our paper, our background paper, and I'm gonna butt it up against that fold as close as I can get it. I'm trying to keep it lined up in the bottom. If you don't get it lined up, that's okay. We can do some trimming. Then if you take the fold and fold it over your paper, it will slide your background paper over where it needs to be so that it doesn't bind up your fold. out. I tend to work very close to my body, which is not good for filming. And when you're cutting something, if you'll angle your scissors like so, instead of having them straight, you can see your cut line better. right side up, just like so.
paper, give it a press. Now we'll gently move this paper to where it needs to be. And you can cut it out with the scissors at this point, or you can get a trimmer if you have it. Trim it off. this and what I do to ensure that I don't get off on the fold I'll take this piece and fold it on itself get it absolutely perfect and then put a crease in it then I know that it's absolutely in half pick up our fold line because I'm gonna cover mine with another layer of cardstock so it's extra thick This is your front. Our little tab here, our little front, is going to go on this side because when you fold it, we want this, excuse me, I dropped it, of course. It's going to fold over like so from the back. Does that make sense? Like so. So it's kind of working upside down. And then this side is going to attach to this one. Make sure we get it right here. Like so. Alright, let's make sure that I got this right side up. Use myself. We're going to put it like this, I believe. No, it's like this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I need to ink up this. I think to make it easier. Oh, what I make it easier for you guys? Let's see. This goes here. Over. I'm sorry, I just want to make it as simple as possible. Yep, that will work out great. That's how we're going to do it. So we're going to take our little thing here, goes in. This was our front. I just like to fold it this way. It just makes it easier because the white is on the white. You don't have to worry about making sure that you've lined up the two pieces if they're folded. Like so. And this one, we're going to do the same. It's going to go right under there. Maybe they have, and I don't know one. Glue that doesn't make a string. I've tried all kinds, and I haven't found it yet. So, butt it up right to the edge. I'm not pushing down hard on it, so that I can scoot it around if needed. Fold it up, give it a press. So, like so, and over. Now, I'm going to back these. So, let's use another one of these. Put it here. And what, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. We're going to butt it up against there, and we're going to cut it right to that score line the left side of the score line. Let's see my mark. Yep. Yeah. Make sure it 
straight. Hopefully I get it done on the first one. So we'll bet it up against this. Fold this. Yep, we're good. Now let's get from top to bottom. This way from off the top to keep that pretty picture. I'm just making a line there, even with this. If you get it off a little bit, if it's too long, we can just flip it over and trim it off with a craft knife. Edges. You can use a preference. If you like it, great. If you don't, then do it. You know, don't do it. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's like we're fitting. you would see this piece buckle up, but it's folding good. There's a glue string again, it just will not leave me alone. Cardstock, it just makes it a little bit durable. It's just my preference. Okay. That's good. what these things are. They're called finger daughters. You can just get them on Amazon. Hobby Lobby, any of the craft stores have them. She also provides you a very good written tutorial on how to put this together. And you can use my video and refer to the, the pictures there extra help, that's okay, we all do. Not as hard as they look by any means. Pages here. And I have already copied on the other side of mine because you don't want these too thick or they won't lay down. If you choose to back them, maybe make a pocket, then you're going to need to add a strap in there to hold them down. If that makes sense to you. I hope so. Thank you. 
here. You want to be very careful. Keep your your tabs the same size so that when they line up on top of each other, that they're identical. Sometimes they get a little bit off. And we have to fix it, but hopefully we got it. Turn this top a little bit. I wanted you to see the process. You can always go get a cup, a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, have a snack, while you're sitting here watching me cut over and over and over. Or your favorite beverage. When you're using a trimmer, if you've ever done it and you get it crooked, it's either because you have your fingers still under here and it's pulling it, or you haven't butted the whole thing up against the bar here. And I do that every once in a while. It's not fun. So if you cut it straight here, you're going to line it up at the half an inch. Line is a little bit off there, so I want to make sure that I'm straight. Snap. We're only human, so you can only do the best you can do. And usually any mistake we come up with usually can be remedied. hard but not really hard because if you do you'll go right through your paper your cardstock possible. My preference is they do it two different ways. It depends on your taste, whatever you want. You can cut off the little triangles, the little white here, if you want. I don't. I leave them there. I just like the look of it when it's folded and it flips up, like so. You've still got the full section here, the full tab, so it, it also helps you get them lined up straighter. up to you. It's what you like. There's some, either way is fine. Now, make sure that we get everything 
ink here. It's easier to ink now than later. photo that's my favorite ink it's my go-to <coughs> excuse me it's about all I use every once in a while I use walnut but it is dark this just kind of blends with everything in my room There we go. You're out of your misery. Okay, let's get them all turned around. You see that some of the little faux pocket there is on the right, some are on the left. So we're going to alternate them. Whichever one you would like. Okay, we're going to line it up. And it's about, let's see, so that we can get them straight. Leave this edge here and this edge here. We're looking at about 3 eighths of an inch. So we'll take 3 eighths, put it in the center. on the bottom side. Yes. 
just make sure that it is straight. You can always, because liquid glue, you can always wiggle it around a little bit. See our line here? Now we're going to take one from this pile. right up against the bottom here. Make sure that we have it from side to side. We're not going to push down yet. Fold this down. Make sure that it is even. You can wiggle it around a little bit. Make sure that when this falls down that it comes perfectly aligned with the edge on the next one. And we can press it down. whichever you prefer. Back to the right side one. and flat. Should I make sure I didn't glue it upside down. That would be awful. And let's find our little tabs here. How many pages? Did you miss VG? 
your designs always give you a ton of stuff. It's this page here with all the little tabs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to back my tabs because I don't want to see the white or you can print on yours if you want, but again, I do them double just so that they're strong because you're going to be using them as flips and they have a purpose and they have a job, so we want to make sure that they're sturdy. I'll show you a real easy way to do it. our little scraps where we cut off these. Got a couple of them here. All we need to do is just back them. To fit on this one. I'm just going to glue them all down. Because nothing is pulling out, I'm going to glue the tab just on one side of the cards. If it was a use where you had to pull out a card from a pocket or something, then I would glue one on one side and one on the other. making a journal, folio, whatever I'm making, I never throw my scraps away. I have a little basket on my desk. Any scrap I cut off, it goes in the basket. That way if I need to back something, I've got a little, if it's small, I've got a little scrap to do that. I don't have to cut into a full piece of paper. scissors. I'll do one for you and so that you're not bored with me doing the same thing over and over and over. Get this one glued on and then I'll glue the other ones down off camera. Make sure you ink it before you glue it down both sides. And we're going to put ink, or excuse me, we're going to put glue just on the tab part here. It's about maybe a quarter of an inch, this little tab. Now you can glue it on top if you want, or you can stick it under and glue it like that. I think I've changed my mind. I think that's what I want to do. I want to glue it on the underneath side. So no harm then. Let's just get that glue off and we'll glue it on this side. I had it right to start with and I flipped it over. Make sure you're even from top to bottom, that your little curve there at the end is right at the top of this edge here. Just scoop it in just a little bit. 
bit. I don't want too much of a hangover. So I move, what I'm doing now is I'm moving it right up to the line. Move it push down. And that's what it'll look like on the other side. So I'll do this, all the rest of them off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got all my tabs on, as you can see. Glued them all onto the back. They're all inked around. Everything is lying perfect. Now we're going to do the center pocket. This big pocket here. There are no tabs. I've already cut mine out. Got it all inked. Make sure I've cut it out properly. Yep. We're only going to glue on this side and the bottom. And I always glue just a tiny bit here because I don't want it flapping. That's just my preference. Just a thin line of glue. And I went up maybe a quarter of an inch there. it's not the the digital it's your printer how it sees it how it grabs it as you can see it's right there but that is not a problem whatsoever we have a craft knife when I did my first one it printed out fine but it can you know be slow to grab it grab it too quick print too far to the end whatever printers are picky so there we have got our pocket there. Now we're going to do our three pockets here, here, and here. And here they are. Again, there's no tabs on these and I've got them all inked. And the trick is to get them lined up. So I'm going to put the one on the bottom where I want it and I'm going to move it just a little bit up from the edge and I'm going to put it there. Then I'm going to kind of look what I've got left, line it up, and then put my other pocket. This one gets me down. A bit more. I think that'll be good. Now what I'm gonna do while I'm holding it here, I'm gonna put a little tiny pencil mark right here at the bottom corner. I know that's where I want it. Take this one, make sure my edges are lined up. Do the same. Now you don't have to fiddle with them with glue on the back. Then line of glue again. about an eight inch from the bottom up. Make sure that you're lined up side to side. Take our next one and let's see where's my line if I can see it. Usually if you can hold it up and get a glare on your paper there. And sometimes I don't press hard enough and get one so let's see. Make sure it's in line with this one, straight up. You can use a ruler or just eyeball it, whichever you like to do.
casing, double check it, make sure it's the same between these two and these two. our inside and we're going to flip it over and we're going to do these three tiered pocket here so I'm going to flip it over like so I've already got them cut out and inked <coughs> excuse me after we get them cut out always line them up make sure that you've cut straight and they do line on top of each other we're going to start with the largest one first all the way to the bottom. Sorry for the silence, guys, but the least I talk, the least I cough. My little granddaughter had this called. I think she shared it with me. And in three days, she was bounced up, off she goes. And here I am. Stuck with the cough. Pockets, you will notice that over so you can get oriented right here. When I flipped it, I added this little camera here. That would be it can be straight here. That would be right here. Get one and I'll show you how I do my fussy cuts. And you can use a big pair of scissors or a small. I, I go back and forth depending on what I'm cutting. And I don't leave a border around mine if I don't have to. I cut right up to the picture. Again, angle your scissors and turn the paper under your scissors instead of turning your scissors to form to the image. Let you see a little bit better. And it just gives it a better cut. so it is a little boring to sit here and watch me cut but I just wanted to give you some tips on fussy cutting there's always new people they don't know so I'm more than happy to share and if you ever have any questions you can always reach out in my store I put the link there. It's on Etsy, KC Creations by Linda. And on the top right, it'll say Contact Seller. And that's where you can message me. Anything you 
you want to ask, don't be afraid. Just smash me and I'll get back with you, I promise. This goes here. You can put whatever you want. This is just what I chose to do. There's lots of fussy cuts that you can pick from. This is what I'm putting on the front. I use this as a pocket also, right above the camera here. See it? The card right here. Made another little pocket. And I could do that because I added the extra layer of cardstock so it's nice and firm and it will support more things being glued onto it. I'm just going to glue along this side here. And another little trick so you don't get confused because I still won't get them flipped over in my head is I always grab what I'm not gluing instead of trying to think upside down. I will cut out this one, put it on, and <coughs> excuse me, I'll be back. I'm gonna back all my ephemera so you don't have to watch that process, and we'll finish it off. Be right back. Okay, we're back. I've got all my ephemera backed, inked, ready to go. Before we continue, I want to tell you about something that I decided that I would not do. You are welcome to do it. It is in the kit. And that is fills up like so. So on the very back, there is a fourth pocket. I chose to use the image that the pocket was made up because I back my cardstock so they're heavier, they're thicker. So it was just a little bit too much for me. But if you don't back your cardstock, or you back some of them, whatever, you're going to glue this one down before you glue the three on top. So there's actually four pockets in this. And then you can put a great big one in here, underneath all these. Just wanted to bring that to your attention in case you wanted to do it. I left it out on purpose just because of my cardstock. Okay, what we're going to do is I've already put some embellishments on mine and on the front here as you saw on the original little camera little suitcase there and I've got those all glued down to do but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna glue our little tabs on here they're for decoration and you do get two extra so if you accidentally cut one wrong not a big deal we're going to glue those down now, and if you look at the original, just kind of space them how, you know, what looks good, get them even, and we'll be gluing down six of them. also reinforces the sides a little bit. I've lost them right there they are. I have so much ephemera on my desk. It also gives the uh, the folds a little bit more strength. I want to glue this down and yes you will be gluing over your little pocket there. doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't take away from the pocket. It's not over this one or over that one. It's in between. And you can measure if you want when you lay down the next one or you can just eyeball it.
straight here. As straight as possible. See my inky fingers. I think they're always inky. This you want to make sure you glue down before we glue down our flower because we want it underneath the flower we're going to put on top of that one. Now this little embellishment I put here is not in the instructions that's provided in the kit, but I just wanted to tack that little guy on there. I thought it was cute. You can embellish it any way you want. There is tons of fussy cuts in here that you can use. You can add more cards than what I've used, especially if you don't back them like I do with an additional layer of cardstock. Gives you more room, you can add more things. There, there's our little tabs. Now, let's flip it over. Make sure your waterfall, you don't mess it up, just run your hand down it. Let's go ahead and do this first. Now what I've done is I did back this because it's going to serve as a little tuck spot when we fold over our top here. I have put, and I use this when I want something really tall. It's not your normal dimensionals. It's just the roll of Scott's double-sided sticky tape, but it's a little bit bigger dimension wise. You only want to put it on half of your flower. And I have inked it already. Put all these little guys off. <clears throat> you can put this on dimensionals. You don't have to do it at all. If you want to Excuse me, still got the cough. If you want to put a Velcro dot there. So let's line it up, get it matching with the flower underneath the best we can. Make sure we're not hanging off there. If we are, we'll just trim them a little bit. So there is our flower. Simple, simple. And on the original on mine, and like I said, this is just mine. This is, you can do it any way you want. When I added these little embellishments, and I've got my little tags to go in them. Here. And I used the camera because it was a little camera there. Just some cute little things to tuck in there. There's a lot of options in this kit, so what you like. Now let's turn it over. We've got our great big pocket here and I have tried to keep them all where it made some sense. I have got all of these that I'm going to stick in that plus the envelope. Like I said, they're all backed already. <coughs> Excuse me. And you notice that the little tabs, there's three of these, and each tab matches the card. So you can pick out whichever ones you like. You can put them all in here, whatever you would like to do. Now let's get to our little folder here. I've got it stuck under here somewhere. Here we go. Now, what we're going to do, I have not glued this down because I'm going to put the little buttons on it. And I've cut out those, and if you have a three-quarter inch circle punch, it matches perfectly. This is craft card stock. It's very, very heavy. If you've never used it before, it's like three layers of card stock in one. But I use that just to make them strong. 
you only need one layer then if you don't have that then just punch out two more glue those together so you have three layers it'll be strong enough turn it press it so that everything's nice and straight I'm going to use a pokey tool, ice pick, um, a very large safety pin, whatever you've got. Slide it up, put it in the middle. we like them and this is just something I did you don't have to do this you could put another velcro dot on the back of underneath here and attach it that way kind of center it with our point here center it between top and bottom our pencil this use whatever hole punch you have use uh, again big safety pin doesn't matter and I think I will do that instead of making a hole I think I'll make it smaller Just a hole all the way through on the breads make sure your little prongs are going sideways and then to get them real tight just take your scissors and push right in the center and that will spread them out even more let's line up this one And if you're going to do this, you need it before you glue your envelope together. See, I'm not glued together yet. Because we're going to put a piece of tape over the prongs of this one so our cards don't catch on it. Card slides in, it won't catch on the little prongs here. Now we're ready to glue it together. I've scored my tabs, folded them under. Whatever color you want, 
You can use regular twine. I did that in the first one, but I decided this gold looked really good. If I can find the end here, I saw it. What a mess I have going on here. I know there's an end, guys. If you see it, yell. Here we go. I always start at the top. Brad has held it on, so it's it's very strong. You can pull your thread pretty tight. Just kind of reach under there, snip it off. Just it up like so. I usually do twice. And I always start at the top because then my thread is hanging from the top. And I cut out this little guy, put an eyelet in it. Just this little tag to put on it just for decoration. Not necessarily, you can just tie a knot if you want. Chosen these. So they're all bagged. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you can fit more in here. Maybe put something you like in there. If this these little prongs bother you showing, then just lay this down on one of your backing papers. Put glue on it, lay it down, cut around it, and it'll cover those up. But they don't hurt anything. They're not going to hang on anything, so we're good to go. Just like so. And we're going to stick him in here. Make sure your tag gets tucked in there. Now we have our three pockets. No, here they are. And I'll see if supposedly I've got them all laid out, but who knows? I put some twine, a little eyelid with some twine. And there's a lot more ephemera to be used that I haven't used. There is so much in here, it's just unbelievable. Center. And we've got our second ones. I tied this one with some jute, this one with some twine, and I did a double tie. But left a little loop in there and tied it here so it looks like you can hang it on something. Can go in this pocket. you pick it doesn't hang over the edge there. Turn this one a little sideways. Move him over. There we go. Let's flip it over. Got our three pockets are four, whichever you decided to do. So this is where we're at now. Right here. This is where I told you that you could add the fourth pocket if you wanted. And let's grab all of our stuff here. 
here. But there is a lot of very large cards in here that you can use for that big pocket that I did not add. start laying pockets on top of pockets it gets tighter and tighter that's why I couldn't use the other pocket in the kit the big one because my cards are, are very thick anyway also it being tight it keeps them from falling out when you fold it, open it and fold it. Now we've got our front where I added this. I cut out the little glasses to go in there. And this little card, just for decoration. I put the globe trotter there emblem there. There he is, guys. We got it done. And we have all of this from the left. Tons of it. As you notice, if you've been crafting along, there's two more of the carts with the little tabs. And we've got little sayings that you can use for embellishment. These large cards, I didn't use them. These are the little pockets. Just cut them out and glue it here and you've got a card that's got a pocket. And you do get a choice of three there. I didn't use these. To-do list, checklist. And what I would do with this, instead of cutting them in half, is I would cut around the edge and then fold it over. And so you would need to put this in your printer again and print one of the back papers on it so it's covered. Just got all of that you can use. We have tons of stuff. Makes me want to put another addition onto this so I can keep adding. This is our little luggage tag. And we're going to fold up our little guy here. some little help at first to get his memory going on where he's supposed to go. Stick him under there. Like so. And I wrapped mine with the twine, remember, around and around. And that's where we're going to attach our little luggage tag here. Kind of get the center the best you can. Up a little bit so you have a nice long tail there so you can tie. And I didn't get mine very straight, but you get the idea. I was really off on this one. But anyway, <laughs> make your straight. And then you're going to take your little luggage tag, and all you did was you cut it out. The back was originally over here. You folded it, glued it together, inked around it if you chose to. Tab. And she has made this so perfect. I have done this twice and I have never had trouble lining up her little tab here. You're going to want to fold it backwards because we want to see the little in there. Stick it through there. And there it is. I hope you enjoyed doing this. It was a lot of fun for me. Stop by Digital and SVG Designs for You. Pick up your kit and give it a try. If you have any questions, reach out to me. You can find me on Etsy at LKC Creations by Linda. 
in the top right it says contact seller just press on that and type in your message and I will reply back immediately thank you so much for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed it bye bye